Whoa, can you believe it? Summer is officially over and fall is right around the corner. Hey, it's Hiken. Thanks for joining me today. I love fall. I love everything about fall from the cooler temperatures, the leaves changing and all the delicious recipes and meals we're planning for the fall, the delicious fall foods. Planning maybe for Halloween parties, making cupcakes, and of course Thanksgiving is its own special meal that we only make that time of the year, so it becomes extra special. And this year, you may invite your family over or visit your family during the holidays because last year's holidays were a bust. That means you'll eat more and you move less. And looking forward into the fall, I want to start this year a little bit differently than normally I start talking about the fall and what's happening right around Halloween. But this year, I am an early bird and I want you to take a peek at the Empty Nest Reboot Program to help you lose stubborn belly fat, get more energy, feel more confident, control your cravings, and fully embrace your second half of life. I just recently created this program during the summer, so it's brand spanking new, and it includes intermittent fasting strategies, lifestyle strategies for the woman over 50, and great Pilates exercises that don't hurt your knees. Click the link in the show notes, and it'll take you right there so you can check it out. So let's dive in to today's episode. I'm Heike Yates, a fitness and nutrition coach with 30 years of experience. I empower empty nester moms over 50 to take back their health and strength to feel vibrant in their second half of life. Right now, you're joined by thousands of empty nester moms around the world who stop dimming their light and instead ignite their spark. On this podcast, I do what I do best, taking complicated information about fitness, nutrition, and mindset strategies, and breaking it down into baby steps that are simple, actionable, and reliable, so you can implement them into your life. I regularly interview some of the most inspiring guests who share their honest stories on how they went from their worst to their best in life so that you know you're not alone in your struggles. Join me as we redefine what aging looks and feels like by taking action and saying, yes, I can. This is the Pursue Your Spark podcast. Bottom line, you know that there seems to be a pattern between weight gain and the holidays every year. I want you to start this end of the year a bit different than any other year, and that is to start by strengthening your core. Many times we talk about, especially in the fitness and wellness space, about weight loss and overcoming eating and eating healthier foods. But I want you to think a little bit differently this year. I want you to think core or abs. Not only is it helpful to have a strong core when you schlep your luggage through the airport or you lift a grandkid up in the air and they can get very heavy or you're playing games with your own grown children, or perhaps you go on a hike with them, you want to be strong. But strong abs or a core, as it's now talked about collectively, has so many other health benefits, especially over 50. And I'm also sharing my five top core exercises that anyone at any fitness level can do. So let's dive into the five tips to get strong and lean abs for over 50s by Thanksgiving or by Halloween or just any time of the year. You know, I have been a Pilates coach for over 20, going on probably 25 years by now. 
And people come to me primarily, even though we end up talking about nutrition strategies or we're incorporating other modalities to help strengthen the entire body, they come to me for Pilates to strengthen their core and help support their back or get rid of back pain. Now, when you think of strengthening your core, the core is a big piece of the body. It's not just the lower abs where we tend to gain body fat as women over 50, but it's a whole, like Joseph Pilates called this the box. And the box is everything but your arms and your legs and probably your head, although it's part of Pilates. But strengthen your core in the Pilates sense is to strengthen your core from the inside out. And that's why it's also so beneficial for back pain. And my clients are really surprised when they, when I don't have them do crunches or planks to begin with but breathing exercises and they go, Heike, does that really do something? And yes, it does. But with everything, it takes time and it takes consistency. Now, one of the questions I always get is, will you lose weight strengthening your abs or will you lose uh, the belly fat when strengthening your abs? (laughs) And I say, okay, this just came to mind, but I do say it all the time or a lot. No, till the cows come home. You can crunch till the cows come home and you will not lose body fat around your belly. But we are not training for a certain time of the year as we hear about the summer body. That seems we only need to look and feel great in a bikini but for our second half in life. So if you want to lose belly fat, you still want to do core exercises for a different purpose. And once you shed the body fat, you will see those hard earned muscles. But despite the fact that our skin is now a little less toned and perhaps a little bit more wrinkly or flabby, well, we are over 50 and as you know, I am. I just turned 60 this year. So there's so many women that tell me I got abs just under my body fat. Fat loss is different than getting a strong core, but both can work together to create a healthy body. So you can do both, but just doing Doing uh, crunches is not getting rid of your belly or body fat. So what is the difference between core versus abdominals? Because you might be confused what is one and what is the other. Because most of my clients tell me, oh, the abdominals. They think about the lower abdominals. That's when they think uh, core work or abdominal work or when Pilates work. So there's some confusion. Let's clarify or clear up the confusion. The major muscles of your core include your transverse abdominals, hence the lower abdominals. If you touch your fingertips on your hip bones and in between the hip bones to the front of the body, there is the transverse or the transverse abdominals. They are the ones that oftentimes are stretched more or this is also where we gain belly fat especially right around the menopause and beyond, that this is where the belly fat sits. But this is the muscle that we need to work in a very different way than all the others. Then we have the multifidus, and the multifidus is or are the muscles that are the closest towards the spinal cord. They are very important when we're strengthening our core, when we talk about strengthening from the inside out, These are the guys that we're trying to get to to help align the spine, uh, work on bulging discs or herniated discs, uh, scoliosis. So these are the little ones we're we're looking for. Then we have the internal and external obliques. If you grab your waist and you twist your upper body, you can feel those muscles moving. They're responsible for bending and flexing and twisting. 
Then we have the erector spinae muscles. These are above the multifidus along the spinal cord. Again, these are also in conjunction with the multifidus, very important for strengthening your back. The diaphragm, yeah, for breathing underneath your rib cage. Then we have the pelvic floor muscles, which are also related or in conjunction with your transverse abdominals, your lower abs, and of course, your abs, the rectus abdominis. And the rectus abdominis is the big guy that starts, that attaches by the, at the pubic bone and goes up to your rib cage and attaches way up there. So it goes in a different direction than all the other abdominal muscle muscles that I just mentioned. And then your minor core muscles include your lats, your latissimus, that's on the side of the back of the body, your traps, which we oftentimes refer to as the neck muscle. Yeah, you can see when you're pulling up your shoulders really high up to your ears, that's what your traps, trap muscles do. And to no surprise of many people, the glutes. The glutes are part of your core. So there's more to a strong core and abdominals than meets the eye. Now, why is it important to have a strong core or strong abs? As I mentioned through when we go through, went through the muscle groups, strengthening the core can help with relief or prevention of back pain. And that's at any age. I worked with children and I worked with seniors in their 90s, over 90, to help relieve back pain-related issues, aligning the spine when it comes to scoliosis. But anybody can benefit from strengthening the core. Uh, it, it also increases pelvic stability. And I want you to also check out my post on build a strong core and pelvic floor, which ties perfectly in with today's episode. And of course, a strong core supports good posture because we always talk about in Pilates, good posture. And that's not a military posture, but it comes from your core. All the muscles I just talked about collectively create or help support a good posture. Strong core improves balance and stability. Yeah, if you, what I call, got nothing in the middle and you're all wobbly, then you will have bad balance and stability all throughout the body. Because as we learn or teach in Pilates as well is that the box, the strong core, as the stronger the core, the more mobile, the more things you can do in life. But it always starts out with stability before we go to mobility. And it also improves ease of movement. The stronger your core is, when you think of going hiking, if you have a strong core, it's a game changer to carry a backpack, to climb up the rocks, to go up hills or, or down hills even, because your core supports all movements of your body. And finally, a strong core reduces the risk of injuries and falls which as we get older, we are more prone to falling than we want to. So the core is amazing and it's an amazing support system for anybody at any age. So what does it take to get a strong core and lean abs? You heard that saying that to get lean or just lean abs or just in general lean, it's 80% diet and 20% 20% exercise. While there is some truth to that idea because you have, if you have an unhealthy diet that is loaded with unhealthy fats, sugars, and processed foods, you can do as much ab or core work, yep, till the cows, cows come home, but it won't make a different in, difference and you'll never see the difference. You may feel that you've gotten stronger, but if you're looking for lean abs and a strong core, it's a, diff it's a game changer. The look of your six pack or washboard abs does not determine your strength. And I always, and I've talked about this in another post is, how bad do you really want it? 
This is what I ask my clients when they want to be strong and have a lean core. You can get a six pack or washboard apps, but it requires a thousand percent commitment from your exercise, exercise, lifestyle, and nutritional choices that you make. As a former bodybuilder, I, my goal was to get as muscularly as big as I could and as lean and as we call it in bodybuilding jargon, ripped as best as I could for my age. And I was bodybuilding when I was in my mid thirties. And did I get washboard abs? Yes. Did my muscles get bigger? Yes. But there were sacrifices I had to make. And when you hear other people or show you on social their big muscles and they say, look, I got all of this by eating a burger or by eating all the carbs I want. By the bottom line, they're lying because it's not possible. And especially as you age and your metabolism slows down, it's right out BS. You have to eat a certain way. That means in order for me to be this lean and this ripped with a six pack, there were no processed carbs. There was no alcohol. I exercised a lot more. I lifted a lot more heavier weights to pack on the muscle. And I measured my portion. Yep. I measured my portion with a scale. I measured every ounce in order to get that look. So if you hear, ah, you can get six packs abs, you can get ripped like me here on social, look at me, look at my big, big, big biceps. First off, it takes a shit ton of work to do that, a thousand percent commitment to do that. And most of us are not ready to live that lifestyle. After three years of bodybuilding, I decided I'm done. I wanted to have a beer. I wanted to not spend my days in the gym lifting heavy weights and not measure my foods. So can you get strong and lean abs and ripped abs? You can, but how bad do you really want it is the question what it comes down to. Now, another thing is, is there such a thing as flat abs? That's one I see on social so much. It drives me crazy. I'm sitting here making a fist because I'm just like, it's not possible. Would you please stop talking about it? You might hear more often than not that somebody is talking about getting flat abs. And here, this is how you get flat, flat abs. And that's your goal. Let me tell you, there are no flat abs. And here is why. Naturally, the rectus abdominals, that's the one that goes from your pubic bone up to your sternum or your rib cage, is a rounded muscle. So because of its attachment, it will never be flat. It will always be slightly rounded. However, you can get it stronger and more defined by exercising and eating the right way. When you say, hi, but I've seen those pictures with those flat abs. The reason why you see those flat abs is because that person is so skinny that the hip bones, Remember where the transverse abdominals are? They go across where we gain the most belly fat as women. These abs down here are, um, what's the word I want to use? They are not visible. The person is so skinny that you don't see those lower ab muscles, but you see the hip bones protruding. So I hope I clarified this and I keep going back at it. There are no things as flat abs, but a strong and defined core. So here are the five tips to get strong and lean abs for women over 50. Number one, adopt a healthy eating habit or eating habits. Eat healthy and balanced meals, including mostly non-processed carbohydrates like vegetables instead of pasta or bread, but minimize fruit if you want to lean out. Eat lean protein with every meal. 
Yes, every meal. Fish, chicken, beans, depending on uh, if you're vegetarian or you're eating fish or meat. But every meal has to have a lean protein. And that's a must. Opt for healthy fats like avocado, nuts, and seeds. And do include them in your meal planning. Super important. I'm not saying you can't eat pasta or bread. If you want lean and defined abs, you need to cut down on those um, carbs, on those processed carbs. Instead, opt for vegetables. Also, be mindful of drinking alcohol. Extra calories are stored up, uh, are stored as body fat. Consuming foods and drinks high in sugar can quickly lead to weight gain and it will also add, or it seemingly feels like it will add that extra little blubber on your belly. You know, we can't choose where all the extra weight ends up, but the body tends to accumulate fat in the abdominal area, the ones I just talked about, the lower abdominals. So diet is an important part of this. Portion control. Oftentimes, this is an overlooked topic when it comes to getting lean abs. We think because we're eating healthy foods that probably that should do the trick. I eat healthy. I uh, eat only the foods that you just mentioned, Heike. But do you actually know how much you're eating? Is it supporting your lean out goals? Is it supporting your healthy, healthy lean out goals, I should say? And I don't want you to go and start measuring your food with a scale like I used to do. But as a precision nutrition coach, we're teaching and the emptiness reboot is no exception. We're teaching the hand measure technique. So when you look at your hand, the palm of the hand is your protein. You make a fist. These are your non-processed carbohydrates. You look at your thumb. The thumb are the healthy fats, which could be pretty much a, um, I think of a sliver of avocado, a quarter of avocado is usually uh, the size of a thumb. If you cup your hand and you look at your cupped hand and you fill it just about to the middle, this could be the grains you're adding into your meals. So portion control is important when you want to get lean abs. Alrighty there. So far, we talked about how to get lean abs. Now let's dive into how to get strong abs and a strong core. So number two are the five best abdominal exercises for women over 50. Alrighty, don't panic. You don't need to suffer through sit-ups to strengthen your core. Pilates is the perfect low impact way to build strength, balance, flexibility, and a strong core. By creating a strong core, you increase the range of motion in the rest of the body and One important thing to remember is you can prevent degeneration of joint and connective tissue. What does that mean? That means when you look at a person that's older, they sometimes look a little, what's the word I want to use? A little shriveled together. That's part of the degeneration of joint and connective tissue. So we want to keep that fluid and long and extended to support the skeletal system. I also created a short video for you so that you can follow along in those five exercises, no matter what the fitness level or what your fitness level is. And we'll put a link in the show notes to those videos. It's actually one video and it's, we're doing the hundreds. We're doing a plank, a side plank, the dead bug and the crisscross. And they're all shown in modifications as well. So look for the video because if I explain those here now, you will glaze over and go, what? But so the five best abdominal exercises for women over 50 in a little video just for you. Number three, 
Number three is cross training. Eating healthy and doing specific core or app exercises are great. Start with that, but I am a huge fan of cross training. Cross training, in essence, is we're not doing the same thing over and over and we're varying our workout. So I don't say, do these five exercises every day. That's all you do. No. But here's, here's the thing. After you do your cardio, things like walking, running, biking, uh, getting some cardiovascular, get your heart pumping, you could do your Pilates core workout that's readily available for you three times a week. The workout is going to take anywhere between, let's say five or 10 minutes at the most. So you can squeeze them in anywhere. Then you may add some resistance training with the um, st stretchy bands, resistance bands that we most of us have, most of us have at home, or free weights if you have some and know how to use them. But that means you're doing something different every day and challenging the body to do something different, being used in a different way, which also creates core strength. So if you think that you are running or walking, you're using your core and your abs in a very different way than if you do Pilates. Adding lifestyle activities is super important. Get up to stretch every five, no, 50 minutes, not just five minutes, that would be a little too much. Every 50 minutes from your computer or park the car further away, uh, taking the stairs instead of the elevators. These are activities we don't give ourselves enough credit for and don't, and don't count them as exercise because they are exercise. So they're called NEAT. These are activities that you just plan in that don't plan, but they happen in your day. You plan a little bit, of course, because if you're thinking about, oh, should I take the stairs or should I take the elevator? Sometimes the elevator wins. Don't let it win. Number four, consistency is key. How to be consistent and why consistency is not happening overnight. We are introducing new patterns, new habits, and perhaps a totally new lifestyle for some of you that are listening, and that takes time. Often I hear, I, get, I have no motivation to get even started. Here's the thing. If you don't start, then you'll never make a change. And that turns into a hamster wheel for or off feeling guilty and defeated. And that feeling is not supporting you and your lifestyle moving forward. I want you to make those changes so small that you don't even notice them if you say, I, I can't get motivated. So what does it look like? How can you get motivated? With baby steps. Instead of pasta. So instead of cooking pasta with your meal, you make cauliflower. Roast it in the oven and add it to your lean protein. Bam, game changer. Don't even need to heat up water. Uh, don't like to exercise? Get off your butt ski and walk around the house for a bit. Like the 50, get up every 50 minutes from your computer and stretch. It's exercise. Or turn on some music and dance. Most women love to dance. It doesn't have to be fancy dance steps. You can just boogie around the kitchen or take a break and garden for a bit. All this counts as exercise. And for instance, keep doing the dead bug exercises until you feel you're getting stronger. Not that you're getting good at it, but you feel that your back is not arching, that your, your front of your body is supporting the back of your body and that you feel at ease with the exercise when it comes to the exercise example. So that's what it looks like when you make changes that are so small. And if from all the exercises that I gave you in the video, the dead bug lights you up, do this one until you can feel the difference when you do it. So you see, 
Consistency doesn't have to come in big chunks and have to do it all attitude, but baby steps and you know what? Every bit counts. And number five, a supportive community. Ask a friend, co-worker, husband, partner, or even your grown kids to support you in your mission to a stronger and leaner core. Tell them what your plan is. To, your plan is. Don't overcomplicate things by, by telling yourself that it's too hard, you're too old, or you just can't do it. Instead, Get their supports for those moments when you feel one of those roadblocks come up, come your way, that you don't feel motivated, that you just rather take the elevator, that ah, I can't think of anything to make with my protein. If you're asking for help for somebody that is supportive of, supportive of you, so don't ask the naysayers. We don't want any naysayers in our lives, but ask the people that love you and support you for strategies that may work for them, or just to say, hey, can you give me an idea? And they will be there for you to help you. You can have a strong core and great looking abs at any age. Remember that everybody is different, but also remember what are you willing to do to get those abs looking the way you want can be a huge commitment. Instead of thinking washboard apps, think health and fitness and take that strong core on your adventures during your second half of life. It can be so doable. Again, if you need a little bit of a boost, if you need help, check out the brand spanking new Empty Nest Reboot program. The link is in the show notes. And I hope... I will see you in the program. And with that, my friends, have the most wonderful day. Ask me anything. Reach out to me on social media, on Instagram at Heike Yates or on Facebook at Heike Yates. Pursue your spark. If you want some clarifications, if you have questions about today's episode, and let me know how you're getting on with getting those strong lean apps any time of the year. Ciao!